do anything. You're not making any changes. You do not need to do anything during this open enrollment season, okay? If you are making plan changes, whether you're changing medical plans, you're adding or terming uh, dental or vision, or you're adding a uh, dependence or terming dependence that is considered a benefit change. And therefore, you do need to submit a new GHB enrollment form to our office by November 15th. All open enrollment packets have been mailed. Please be on the lookout for those. Um, briefly, I would show you an electronic version located in our TAC benefits website um, under 2024 open enrollment materials in case it was lost in the mail or you just simply want an electronic copy to save um, or reference. And everyone will be receiving new medical ID cards um, what Robert was just uh, telling us about the new partnership with Apta Health and Quantum and UMR and UHC, you will be receiving everyone eligible in the TAC Group Health Benefits Plan will be receiving new ID cards in the mail around Christmas time. So please be on the lookout for those. Your current Boone Chapman ID card is still valid until December 31st. So you can still use your Boone Chapman ID card until that date. Just know that starting January 1st, that medical ID card for Boone Chapman will not work. And so you will need to do uh, and use the new medical ID cards in the mail. And lastly, you do not need to complete the additional insurance form that we are used to completing every year at the beginning of the year. If you have dependent coverage, um, you will not have to do that going forward. APTA Health will be calling participants each year to ask for a fication of additional coverage. And that is if it's applicable to you. If you have dependent coverage, they will be proactively calling each year to confirm that um, via phone. So you do not need to complete any other form um, other than if you're making plan changes or if you're a new clergy and you just complete your initial enrollment form. At this moment, I'm going to stop briefly and um, give you time to scan these two QR codes as each of them will take you to our website and I'll explain them in a few minutes. Apologize. The first one is the benefits homepage. This is the direct link to all of our information that it's in our benefits homepage. The second QR code is directly to our open enrollment materials. So go ahead and scan those, save them, bookmark them on your phone um, so that you can turn into um, later on. As well as direct links to these website will be given to you via email. So if you cannot scan your phone, if you're using your phone for this webinar and you cannot scan it, just don't worry about it. Um, I will email you direct links to them. Here is our benefits homepage. This is where you will find all benefit related information, including uh, group health benefits and pension. Right here in the arrow is where you would go during this open enrollment season to find this webinar that will be recorded. It will be posted on this website, as well as all open enrollment materials, including the electronic version of the open enrollment uh, packet as well as individual documents in case you want to see a specific document. This is the open enrollment materials page. Right here at the top, this section, you'll see the active clergy and active TAC lay employee information. To download the full mail packet, you will just go on here and you will have the electronic version. If you are planning on making a benefit change for next year, you would need to complete number four for if you're an active clergy or an active TACLA employee. This is the new GHB enrollment form, which I'll show you briefly, but this is where it's located under open enrollment materials. Under here, closer to the, to the, to the middle of the page, you'll find um, under 65 early retirees and under 65 spouses, as well as under 65 surviving spouses and other dependents of Medicare primary participants. This is your section. 
if you're one of those in one of those categories, please know that you have a, a specific enrollment form that you need to com complete during open enrollment if you are planning on making benefit changes. Um, we just wanna make sure that you go to the correct enrollment form, uh, whether you are an active clergy or lay or an under 65. This is the new GHB enrollment form that you will need to complete if you're an active clergy and active lay employee. Um, this is just the first page. There's three pages to this document. I just wanted to show you so that you preview it and you know exactly how the form um, does look. I will now go into benefit changes for next year. Effective 1-1-2024, one, one, marriage and, counsel and family counseling will be part of both health plan and effective 1-1-2024, one, one, the supplements and counseling benefits will be discontinued. What this means is now cost sharing for all mental health counseling visits, including but not limited to marriage and family counseling will be covered on both the standard PPO and high deductible health plan. And so there will be a $25 copay for all in-network mental health counseling visits under the standard PPO. Under the high deductible PPO, all mental health counseling visits will be subject to the in-network and out-of-network deductibles and coinsurance. The next benefit change, effective 1 1 2024, is the hearing aid. And so the standalone hearing aid out of pocket reimbursement benefit will be discontinued. And these services will be integrated into both the standard PPO and high deductible health plan. And as follows the hearing aid will be covered once every three years for each year if required. And so applicable standard uh, PPO and high deductible PPO in network and or out of network deductibles, coinsurance and maximum out of pocket expenses will apply. The covered benefits include a hearing aid instruments, a visit for the fitting, the counseling and adjustments, the initial battery, the cords and other equipment as well as surgically implanted of a hearing aid. The following are not covered. The purchase of batteries or other equipment, charges for a hearing aid that exceeds the specification prescribed, or replacement of parts for the hearing aid, or repair that is outside of the warranty period. The next effects of 1 1 2024 the Houston Methodist Hospital write off non collection agreement. So the Houston Methodist write off non collection agreement will continue in 2024. Let me say that again. The Houston Methodist Hospital non-collection agreement will continue in 2024. However, deductibles and coinsurance amounts that are waived at Houston Methodist and related facilities will not be applied towards your deductibles and out-of-pocket maximums should you visit other hospitals that are not Houston Methodist Hospital subsequently. For example, if you visit Houston Methodist Hospital in January of 24 and your deductible is met due to the charges that are waived, then you visit a non-Houston Methodist Hospital afterwards, you will still have to meet your deductible at that other non-Houston Methodist Hospital. And so at this time, I'm gonna stop for questions. Um, just let me know if you have any questions regarding the benefits website, the new GHB enrollment form, the benefit changes that we talked about, marriage and family counseling, hearing aids, the Houston Methodist Hospital right of uh, non-collection agreement, as well as I'm listing our contact information in case you would like to contact us uh, directly. Please know that feel free to email us at any time. And Marianelle, it looks like we have a question in the chat box. And someone is asking if they can still get a partial reimbursement if they see out-of-network providers 
on both plans and specific to the counseling benefit? So it will be subject to uh, the deductibles and coinsurance as well as the maximum allowable charge if you go out of, out of network. And so we always try to go in network to get the best uh, benefit. I see the next question, is anything with birth at Houston Methodist changing? No, you can still use Houston Methodist Hospital. Um, hospital charges will be waived if you go to Houston Methodist, but just know if you need to go to another hospital, if you visit another hospital in the year, um, you still have to meet your deductible at that hospital. Is the Methodist Hospital non-collection agreement for the high deductible plan or just for the standard PPO? So thank you for your question. It is only for the standard PPO. The write-off, the non-collection agreement is only for the standard PPO uh, plan participants. Will there be any help in finding providers and network counselors? Yes. Apta Health will, they're, they're gonna, in their presentation, they will let you know how you can communicate with them, but they will be your uh, healthcare warriors. They'll help you throughout uh, your, uh, your needs as well as you can contact us and we will help you as well. Just for clarity, high deductible plan has no counseling benefit until full deduct deductible is met. So how the high deductible health plan works is that you have to meet your deductible first is 1,850. So you still have the benefit. You can still see um, somebody, uh, a counselor on the high deductible health plan. Just know that because it's a high deductible health plan, you have to meet your deductible first. What are other Methodist related hospitals? You can go on our website and uh, it's the one that I showed you right here. Let me go back. And on here, um, you will be able to see, let me go into that screen directly. If you go and on our TAC homepage, you click here and then you will go to where it says the Houston Methodist Hospital Benefit. On that specific page, you ha will have a list of all the hospitals that are in this write-off uh, collection agreement. If your primary care is in network, does the deductible met at Methodist hospitals apply? Okay, I think you have two questions here. If your primary care is a network, so if you're going to the hosp Methodist Hospital for a hospital visit, okay, your hospital charges, if you're under the standard PPO, will be waived. If your primary care is a network and you're under the standard PPO plan, then you would just pay your uh, copay at that visit. Once deductible met on high deductible plan, is there simple copay for counseling or is it a 80-20 split? So on the high deductible health plan, once the deductible is met, you pay a 20% coinsurance, the plan will pay 80% coinsurance. Is there a site? These are great questions, guys, thank you. Is there a site we can check to see if our assisting doctors are in the new UHC system or so we can remain in network? Yes, um, we will share all that information with you via, uh, in, uh, via email as well as it will be posted on our website. Um, we will do so effective 1-1-2024, but yes, you, there will be a direct link to UAC's uh, PPO network where you will be able to check if your doctor is still in network. And we also did a disruption list on our current providers, the top providers, and 99.9% .9 match. So uh, most of you will have, won't have a gap in, in or interruption in your uh, doctors. Is our network changing? Do we have to find new doctors? I kind of just answer the question. The network is changing. We are going to UAC, United Healthcare. 
um, you can still see your new doctor, just make sure that they're in network with UHC. And then last question I see here, I think we had a plan called EAP, yes, Employer Assisting Program that offered a counseling sessions for free for clergy and family. That will not be discontinued. We will still do that. We will still have that. That's, a, that's an outside benefit um, that it's outside of our medical plans. So yes, we will still have the EAP. Great questions. Thank you very much. If you have any other questions, just feel free to keep asking them and um, I'll do my best to answer in the chat. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Mark Helms, which he will be talking to us about current uh, rate changes for next year. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Marianella. Um, yes, I'm gonna just cover quickly uh, the group health benefit rate changes that will be in effect as of January 1st, 2024. Next slide. Okay, what you're looking at is the 2024 uh, rates for active clergy that are effective starting January 1st, 2024. These are the rates by plan. So if you look at the various coverage levels in the left-hand column, you see the four levels of coverage available for selection. And then under the high deductible plan and the standard PPO plan, are the billing rates that will be in effect for 2024. And again, these rates are applied against the plan compensation uh, specific to the clergy participant. Also, as a reminder, the church GHB contribution rate for 2024 will be 12.5%. This slide is uh, showing the group health rates for the early retirement group. Uh, those were early retirees below the age of 65. These flat dollar uh, uh, monthly premiums are listed again by the various four levels of coverage. And under the high deductible plan, uh, those are the monthly premiums that would be paid for those various levels of coverage. And same goes for the standard PPO plan. And then finally, the Humana dental and vision rates in effect for 2024, uh, no change in the rates. Uh, once again, four levels of coverage for the dental plan, and then the far right-hand column, the vision plan. Okay, um, I'm now gonna turn it over to Carrie Miranda with our uh, consulting group, the Alera Group to give you folks some uh, insight on the uh, uh, high deductible plan. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mark. Carrie here, and I'm gonna walk you through the high deductible health plan and some of the great features. So to touch on this, next Tuesday, October 31st, from two to 3 p.m., we're gonna do a deep dive into the high deductible health plan and the health savings account and how those you can maximize it to really to your advantage. So we're gonna take all of the scary out of high deductible health plans next Tuesday and tackle how does the plan work? How does that health savings account work? And debunk some of the scary myths out there. So you should have already received an email with a Zoom link invitation if you didn't, just reach out to Marianella and she'll get that over to you. Great, so on the next slide, we're gonna start going high level over how the health savings account works and the high deductible health plan. So here you'll see the high deductible health plan or HDHP for short is paired with an HSA, a health savings account. And that health savings account comes with a debit card and you use it to help pay for your out-of-pocket costs. And this account, you can set it up with HSA Bank or any bank of your choice. And the funds that you deposit in your health savings account has tax advantages. 
and the high deductible health plan, it is going to use the same exact network as the traditional PPA. So all the same doctors, there'll be no difference between the two plans. So as we jump to the next slide, we're going to cover some of the general rules on the health savings account. So first and foremost, you must be enrolled in a high deductible health plan in order to actively participate or contribute to a health savings account. And because it is tax advantage, the IRS does have some rules. Um, but the great thing is the money that you deposit into your health savings account, uh, tax advantage, the interest earnings are tax free and withdrawals, there's no tax penalties when you use it for qualified healthcare expenses. So, but what we like to call the triple advantage, and a great feature too is at the end of the plan year, any funds you have in your health savings account, it just rolls over to the next year. That money does not go away. And if you were to change jobs or health plans, the health savings account, it is your account and follows you no matter where you go. And you can utilize those funds by using your HSA debit card or you can let the money sit for a while, earn interest, and then reimburse yourself at a future date. So a lot of great features. For 2024, the IRS maximums did increase, and you'll see for single coverage, if it's just yourself, you can contribute <clears throat> up to $4,150 in family coverage, $8,300. And what they consider family coverage is you plus one dependent. So it could be you and a spouse, one child, couple of children, or the whole family. And for those who will be age 55 or turning 55 next year, you can do a catch-up contribution just like you can with 401k. And that amount is an additional $1,000 on top of that IRS maximum. Great. So as we keep going forward, now we go over some of the other rules, who's eligible for a health savings account. And again, because it is tax advantage, the IRS does have a few rules. So first and foremost, you must be enrolled in a high deductible health plan. And you or your spouse cannot be covered by a non HSA plan. In other words, if you enroll, you cannot contribute to a health savings account if you are covered by a PPO plan, a traditional PPO plan. You cannot be enrolled in Medicare, TRICARE, or TRICARE for Life. You cannot be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return. You cannot receive benefits from the VA within the past three months and do not contribute to a healthcare FSA, you or your spouse. And again, these are IRS rules. However, if you're not eligible to contribute to a health savings account, you could still enroll in the high deductible health plan. These are specific to the health savings account. So really important, it is your responsibility to determine if you're eligible, but you can always check with your whoever prepares your tax forms. They're a great resource to check as well if you're not sure. And as we've mentioned, your contributions to the health savings account is tax deductible money. And you can fund it anytime throughout the year up through April 15th of the following year, kind of like an IRA. Your contributions or elections can be made on a month by month basis. You can change it. And for making those tax-free contributions, you can do that directly into your account and file IRS tax form called 8889 with your 1040. And what that will do is let them know you've made, let's say, 1,500 in contributions. 
So that's going to lower your taxable income by $1,500. Or another way is check with your church and see if they can set up pre-tax payroll deductions. So to get a health savings account set up, you can always visit HSA Bank. There's a link right on the page here. Or you can even, if you have a preferred bank, you can set it up with your bank. Ah, so distributions, how to use that health savings account. So the distributions are tax-free for qualified health expenses. And again, IRS rules, but there's a large list of eligible expenses that you can find on irs.gov, but typically it's gonna be qualified medical, dental, and vision. So things like your co-pays, your co-insurance, um, that go towards your deductible, pharmacy prescriptions, lab and x-ray, and even dental and vision. So of course with the dental, um, anything that's not cosmetic. So if orthodontics are required by the uh, orthodontist, then that would be covered. Teeth whitening, probably not. So, and the same thing with vision, anything prescription will be an eligible expense. If they're just really nice sunglasses, they won't be. And some other things that would be covered is like acupuncture, smoking cessation, speech therapy, and there's even some over-the-counter items as well. So just a note, distributions from your HSA for non-qualified expenses are subject to income tax and can incur a 20% penalty. So really important as you pay for your services, keep those receipts and just keep it um, filed with your tax forms. You don't have to turn it in or substantiate it anywhere, but if down the road for some reason you get selected for a random audit, they may ask to see those receipts. And another great item about your health savings accounts is for those age 65 and over, the 20% penalty does not apply. And here, these are just the rates. And we have some examples. If there's a worst case scenario, um, there is an out-of-pocket maximum, especially in network, that's going to protect you. And that's on both plans. Although that out-of-pocket maximum is lower in the high deductible health plan. So we put together some examples of what you would pay out-of-pocket in contributions and for services. And there is a definite savings at the end of the year. So what we'll do next Tuesday is really dive into the details of the two examples up on screen right now, this is for individual coverage. And in this slide, we have family coverage. And again, these are worst case scenarios. If everybody in the family needed surgery and treatment or a lot of things going on, you have that out of pocket maximum to protect you. And the difference between that and what you contribute you'll actually save $7,400 on that high deductible health plan. Right. And certainly it is a lot of information. So we'll pause for any questions um, on the high deductible health plan. And I do see someone's asking about, uh, they have Medicare Part A only, and if they qualify for a health savings account. And unfortunately, having Part A does disqualify you. However, if you unenroll from Part A and get that extension to enroll later because you're still working, um, then you would be able to enroll. So you could join the high deductible health plan. You just wouldn't be able to contribute to the health savings account. I know the IRS is a little bit of a stickler on that. And I don't see any other questions in the chat box, but keep them coming. These are great questions. And now really excited to introduce Lenore. 
and she's going to go over the new care coordination program through APTA and Quantum. Uh, take it away, Lenore. Thank you, Carrie. Hello, everyone. I'm Lenore Stanley with APTA Health. So I'm sure the burning question today is really, what is APTA Health? All right, and it doesn't look like it's going to let me advance the slides on my end. So APTA Health is a healthcare concierge program really designed to help guide members and answer questions as they're going through healthcare journeys. Um, one of the, some of the reasons that we find this to be valuable is Healthcare is very confusing. Um, I'm sure you've all gone to your doctor, you've had them tell you something, you get a notice in the mail, you call your insurance company and what you're getting from them doesn't necessarily match up with what your provider is telling you. And that's fairly normal. As you can see here, about 50% of patients are confused when it comes to healthcare. And so with APTA, we want to give you a place that you can call and get your questions answered and kind of make sense of both sides of that story, what you're getting from your provider and what you get from your insurance. Uh, we also find that about 44% of people trying to navigate healthcare on their own hit a dead end and then they get confused, they get frustrated, and they just stop trying to get the care that they need. So we want to make sure that that's not happening. We also encourage getting referrals to specialists because we found that 61% of us, when we self-refer ourselves, we don't get it right the first time. Um, I myself have been very guilty of, I go to Google, I put in my symptoms, I think I need to know, I think I need, I know where I need to go and I'm wrong. Um, for instance, maybe you develop a rash on your arm, you can't get rid of it. So you go to a dermatologist because it's your skin. Obviously you would need to go to a dermatologist and then you find out that it's an allergy for something and you actually need to see an allergist. So we just want to make sure that we're helping get you to the right specialist at the right time. Um, everyone is busy. It takes a lot of time out of your day to schedule those appointments, go see somebody. So we just, we want to make sure that we're saving you time and you're getting the best value by going to the right specialist that first time around. Also, when people have procedures like outpatient surgeries or any kind of inpatient visit, you know, your doctor almost goes through your care instructions with you before you leave. If you have an outpatient surgery, oftentimes you're a little out of it, possibly still coming out of anesthesia. And the next day when you're trying to remember what you were supposed to do, you don't remember or the instructions you brought home don't make sense. So we want to make sure that you have a a place to call, somebody that's going to help walk you through that and make sure that you know what you need to do so that you're recovering as quickly as you can. And in addition to that, a lot of times we find that physician services are duplicated, so we want to help eliminate that. All right, so what makes APTA different? At APTA Health, we really like to think of ourselves as a sanctuary for members, a safe place to call, have your questions answered. We have the expertise within our pods to help make sure that we can answer any questions that you have, whether they be related to claims or the actual benefits, finding providers, any of that we're equipped to be able to help answer for you. The care coordinators have a real stick with them mentality. So when you call, you don't have to start from ground zero every time you call in and give your full backstory. They keep really good records. So anytime you call, anybody can see any other conversations that you've had, and they want to make sure that you can kind of keep going. Oftentimes, when you call into your insurance company, you have to start over with every single person that you talk to and go through everything that you've already explained just to get to where you are today to move forward. And with APTA, we have all that information so you can just start with where you're at today and move forward. We don't want you to have to reiterate that. We want you to know that we're, we're there to help and support you, not to waste your time. 
I know you heard Marianella mention the healthcare warriors, and that really is what the care coordinators think of themselves as is healthcare warriors. They actually have a warrior mantra that is all over the cubicles where they work, and they take that very seriously. At the end of the day, they want you to feel like you have developed a friendship. You have somebody that you are so comfortable calling and talking to. It's as if you were calling and talking to a friend. Um, we also talk about the power of one. And what this is, is we wanna make sure that you have one phone number to call. That's gonna be the number that's on your ID card. That's gonna be the number on the website we're gonna talk about shortly. The number on your app. It's one dedicated team of people that you're calling and talking to. Um, with the care coordinators, they're not spread out all over the US. They're all sitting together in an office in Columbus, Ohio, in one place where if they need to get you from one person to another, they can look over the cubicle wall and make sure that that person is available. They're not trying to get you to somebody that is three states away and two time zones away or anything like that. They're all there together to really make that a cohesive experience for you. So we've talked about the care coordinators. Um, wanna tell you a little bit more about them. We have care coordinators, we have a dedicated pod. That's what we refer to them as. That is the group of people that make up the care coordination team. The pod consists of anywhere from 25 to 30 members at any given time. And within that pod, we have patient service representatives, we have benefit specialists, we have RNs, and those RNs also act as personal care guides. And there are RNs that specialize in all different areas of health care so that we can make sure that if you do have a situation where you need that personal care guide, we can have somebody who is qualified to help with the specific journey that you're on. There are also physicians, pharmacists, social workers. So it is really staffed to make sure that we can help you with anything that you need in real time. Um, some of the things that the care coordinators will be able to help you with is, like I said, they're going to be your single point of contact to answer any of your benefit questions. They're going to be able to help you find in-network providers. They will be able to work with your doctor if you need a referral, if you need a procedure and we need to obtain medical records, whatever it is, they're going to help with that and they'll be able to reach directly out to your doctor so you don't have to worry about all of those details. They can help with any claim questions that you have. They're gonna be able to help if you have lost ID cards or need an additional copy. And anything else regarding your healthcare that you may need, have questions on, need help with, they're going to be there to help guide you. So we talked a little bit about the referral process. Um, first thing I want to hit on is getting a referral to a specialist is not a requirement of the plan, but it is strongly recommended. Um, as I mentioned before, 61% of us self-refer and we don't get it right the first time. So we do recommend getting a referral from your PCP before you see a specialist. Um, again, this just helps avoid additional visits to the wrong specialist. It makes sure that when you are seeing a specialist that we're making sure that we're finding an in-network specialist for you. All referrals that you get are valid for 12 full months from the time you get them. So even though your plan might go January to December, the referral is good from the time you get it for a full 12 months. One thing to keep in mind, the care coordinators will do a lot for you, but you do still have to call your physicians and schedule the doctor's visits on your own. That is one thing they do not do for you. All right, another component of the plan, this isn't new, but this isn't something that's typically highlighted, is pre-certified services. So here we have a list of items that do require a pre-certification. And what that means is it requires a medical review to verify that it is medically necessary that these procedures are done. Um, if for any reason this is not done, there is a $500 reduction in benefits. Um, and you can see here, it does say $500 penalty for failure to pre-certify. 
a couple of things to make this a little bit less scary sounding is this is very standard in the industry and providers are well aware that these kind of services require an authorization. All of these items are also listed right on your ID card. So, you know, you go to the doctor, the first thing they want is the copy of that ID card. When they get that card, they have a copy of this list. So they know if they're sending you on to get an MRI or a PET scan, anything like that, they know that requires a pre-certification. If they're recommending some kind of outpatient procedure, it's on the ID card. They know that requires a pre-certification. What I recommend for you is that if you know you're having these services, reach out to the care coordinators and just make sure that your physician has taken care of that and that this is on file. You are also able to go to the website we're going to talk about or the app and see any authorizations that are on file for you. Um, it's just a good way to do that double check since it is you that would face that $500 reduction in benefits. All right. <clears throat> So this is the app. It is going to be an app that is dedicated just to your population. Um, as you can see, the URL is going to be tac.myapptohealth.com. And as of January 1st, you'll be able to go out and register on this website. On the website, you're going to be able to find all of your benefit information. We will have all of your accumulator information saved out here. Any additional benefits outside of your health plan, we will send, we will post links to. So if you have questions about like, say your health savings account that we talked about, we'll have links out here so that you can get to that information right through the tac.myapptohealth.com website. You will also be able to communicate with the care coordinators through the website. As soon as you log in, the first thing you're going to see is going to be the 800 number to call them. There is also an option to chat with the care coordinators through the website. There is an option to send them secure emails through the website. And there's an also an option to schedule a call. So if you know that you have a busy day, but you really need to talk to that care coordinator and you have a break at three o'clock, but you don't wanna to have to remember yourself that during that time you need to call them, you can go to the website and you can schedule a call so that when that time comes around, that care coordinator will actually call you and you can talk with them about whatever it is that you need or any questions that you have. The best thing is we also have an app. It's the Quantum Health app. And everything that is available through the website is also available through the app. You can still communicate with the care coordinators in the same way. You can still search providers in the same way, access your digital ID card. You can check your claims information, your accumulators, look at EOBs, everything you can do on the website, you can also do on the app. All right, an additional service that is going to be available is going to be Teladoc. This is a telemedicine vendor that you will have access to um, through Teladoc. They can do treatment for bronchitis, flu, rashes, sinus infections, sore throats. The best part about Teladoc is one, it's convenient. This is something you can do from the comfort of your own home. Through the app, you can call in to request an appointment with a Teladoc physician. You can use the app or you can go through the website. This is also going to be covered at 100% if you are on the PPO plan. And if you are on the high deductible plan, there is a $49 copay until you reach your deductible. And then you would pay 20% after deductible once that deductible is met. Or yes. <clears throat> um, again, this is something that you can do from the comfort of your home. You don't have to leave. It's a great alternative to going to an urgent care especially if you have small children. Um, I know I have a three-year-old and when she is sick, have, trying to get her dressed and ready to go and sit with her in a waiting room at an urgent care can be torture. Having Teladoc has saved me numerous times with her. I'm able to call, I'm able to talk to a doctor. If it's something that they visually need to see, you can upload pictures or you can even do 
a video call with them to show them and they're able to call in prescriptions for you. In addition to the regular medical benefits, there are also mental health services available through Teladoc. Again, this is available from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week. Um, and they can help treat anything like anxiety, depression. If you're just not feeling like yourself and need someone to talk to, you can request an appointment. This is also covered at 100% on the PPO plan. And it is a $220 initial evaluation and then $100 for ongoing visits prior to deductible and then 20% after deductible for the high deductible plan. All right, another service that we're offering is called Cash, which I know it sounds a little bit different. So what exactly is Cash? It is a healthcare concierge, different from the Apta healthcare coordinators, that helps employees lower their out-of-pocket costs by choosing high quality providers that offer affordable cash prices. So we do have another concierge team and what they do is they actually work with providers to negotiate an upfront cash price for different services. Um, what happens is if you need to have something say an MRI, outpatient surgery, a lot of those same services that require pre-certification actually, we are able to go out to providers, do that upfront cash negotiation for you, and then it saves you money out of pocket, plus it saves time because when you go to have that procedure, the provider has already been paid, so you can have that service done you don't have to worry about getting any kind of balance bills in the mail afterwards because the financial piece of it is already done and taken care of up front. The one thing if you want to utilize after cash is we want to make sure that you are not sharing your insurance information with providers. Yeah. Once a provider has your insurance information, it's really hard to do those negotiations. So if you have something going on, you go to your PCP, your PCP says, you know, I think you really need to have an MRI so we can figure out what's going on here. Before you call a facility to schedule that MRI and provide insurance information, I would reach out to the care coordinators, let them know that you need to have an MRI done and that you would like to work with Aptacash and they will get you to the right concierge service to do so or you can call directly to the Aptacash concierge service and they will take it from there. They will find you a facility for that MRI. They will do the negotiation. They will get back to you, let you know what your options are as far as where you can go, what that cost might be to you. And you make the final decision on if you wanna move forward with that or if you'd rather go through regular benefits. And then you have your service and you don't have to worry about any of the back end billing, EOBs, any of the hassle that you do today when you have some of those services done. All right, another piece, this is something that you'll have access to on the website is the United Healthcare Transparency Tool. It's called My Health Cost Estimator. And what this is, is it's a tool that you can use to shop around for different procedures. What it'll do is if you, I'm gonna use the MRI example again, but if you know you need to have an MRI, you can go out and search for pro providers in your area where you can get an MRI. And you would be surprised to find that you may put in your zip code and what you need done and find that you have four facilities within five miles of your residence. This is great, right? But you may also find that the price ranges anywhere from $750 all the way up to $4,500. So this helps you shop around and it also tells you how these different facilities are rated. It's not only going to tell you, okay, this is the least expensive option you should go here. It's going to let you know the cost and the quality of the provider to make sure that you're going to a good quality provider with good outcomes, but still at a more reasonable cost. All right, a couple of key things to keep in mind. All of this goes into effect on January 1st. 
So as of January 1st, you'll be able to call into the care coordinators. You'll be able to register for the website, download the Quantum Health app. Everything will be available on January 1st. All right, I think that takes us to the end. Are there any other questions? Lenore, I'm not sure if you saw in the chat box, but someone is asking, they're already seeing a specialist that they received a referral by their current um, PCP. Do they need to get a new referral in January? So if you are seeing a specialist that you got a referral from your PCP, you should be able to reach out to your PCP and ask them for a copy of that referral so that we can get that to the care coordinators and get that on file for you. Great, and it looks like someone else is asking on on the high deductible health plan, once the deductible is met, what is the 20% amount for a teledoc visit? Is it a predictable fee? And yes, it is. So teledoc, that fee is $49. So once you, until you meet your deductible, it'll be $49. And then after that, it would just be 20% of that 49. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, All right. Is... Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> one oh, more. I pulled up the questions. Okay. Um, it looks like there is another one. Would we be able to use the surgeon our doctor recommends on app to cash? So the answer to that is maybe. Not all providers are willing to do these negotiations. But if there is a doctor that you're wanting to see, you can definitely let the Apticash concierge team know that and they will attempt to reach out to them. There just isn't a guarantee that they will be willing to negotiate or would be the best option with Apticash. All right, <clears throat> next question for concierge service billing. Using the MRI example, the price that is negotiated, does that include facility and position or just facility? When they go out and do a negotiation for these kind of procedures, they're going to negotiate the price of the entire service. So in this instance, it would include facility and position. So you're gonna have that total amount. They're gonna pay upfront for that so that there's no surprises on the back end. Any other questions? All right. Um, Robert, did you wanna? Yes, thank you, Lenore, <clears throat> and thank you for the whole team. This concludes our webinar for, for today. Uh, you'll notice there on the screen are the QR codes for both the uh, homepage and the open enrollment for the materials <clears throat> that are on the website. You also see uh, Mary Nella and Patricia, Mark and myself's uh, names and contact information. You are welcome to call or email any of us if you have any other further questions. Please note the high deductible PPO plan webinar for next Tuesday at two o'clock. Answers and goes into a deep dive for the high deductible uh, plan. Just know friends that when you come to that um, next Tuesday, there's a new link that you will receive uh, <clears throat> in email by email, just like you received the link for today. You'll receive that uh, early next week as well uh, in anticipation for Tuesday afternoon's uh, webinar. Uh, when you compare the high deductible and the standard PPO, y'all know, I believe, that the standard PPO is at a higher rate uh, than the high deductible rate. And, and so over, over the months, over 12 months, 
the PPO is at a higher rate and the high deductible every month is a lower rate. If you did the comparison at the end of the year, if you had some kind of uh, surgery or some kind of hospital visit, um, the high deductible, because you pay lower each month, you may have an out-of-pocket cost for that procedure. But overall, when you compare the two, the high deductible is always the lower cost. And we'll talk more about that on Tuesday at the um, webinar meeting for the high deductible. Again, thank you so very much for uh, participating in this uh, webinar and feel free to reach out to any of us. And we look forward to working with APTA Health and all of their team and using the United Healthcare PPO network. And we're excited uh, to be in partnership with our new providers. Thank you all friends for joining us.